What's up team? So today we're going to be working on a 2017 Nissan Altima. We're going to be doing the cooling system. So right here is the petcock at the bottom of the radiator on the passenger side. If your vehicle does not have one, then just go ahead and detach the lower radiator hose and let that drain out. Essentially what this is going to do is going to go ahead and just get all the fluids out. Now as you can see it's running really slow right now. Just go ahead and take off the radiator cap and it'll just be flowing through there. So, so as you can see the color is blue so you want to make sure with your vehicle what type of radiator fluid it's supposed to have. So the best thing to do that is either talk to your auto parts store or check your owner's manual. So right here I'm disconnecting the hose from the reservoir that goes into the radiator so that way I can go ahead and actually drain everything that's in the reservoir itself so there is a clip there at the end of the hose so just take some pliers as you see me doing here go ahead and squeeze it slide it over and then it should pull right out now other than that little clip there is a plastic zip tie uh, push tab in there so as you see I'll grab the trim tool let's go ahead and actually put put it right behind the tab and then just go ahead and work it out just like that now what we're gonna do we're gonna get let gravity do all the work so as you can see I'm looking to see where it is the best way to fish this hose down through the engine to the lower part of the radiator so that way I can drain it into my uh, catch cam. Just take your time with this step because you don't want it obviously to go all over the place. You want to make sure it's all lined up with the catch cam so that way it all drains in there. I'm going down just to make sure it's lined up. Make sure it's draining in. Again, gravity deal all the work. You don't really have to do anything. And it'll start sliding right down. Now let's go ahead and take a look to see where how I have it. So as you can see here, there's the the hose that goes to the reservoir just making sure that it's secure so basically what you do is just let this all run out and then once it's all ran out and everything reconnect the hose as I'm doing here now one thing I did want to mention is that I did put a uh, chemical cleaner into the radiator let it run through for a couple days so that way it has time to loosen up any kind of uh, rust or anything inside of the radiator at all so that way it will all come out as we're doing the flush so this is the chemical cleaner here I'll go ahead and put a link in the description on where you can go ahead and, and uh, get it so I'm going to go ahead and put some more in here into the uh, reservoir so that way after I add the uh, distilled water and everything just to kind of help continue flushing everything out because I, since I did just drain it that means the chemical cleaner is actually all out so I'm going to go ahead and put this in here and let it run through the system. All right, so now I'll go ahead and uh, when you're doing this process, you want to make sure you have uh, distilled water, not regular water or anything like that. You want to make sure it's distilled. That way there's no minerals or anything in the water. This way it'll help loosen everything up and run along. Now, the other thing that you can do if you have access to it, I would suggest as, as well to go ahead and 
remove the thermostat. Once you remove the thermostat, it gives it a little more free range for everything to go run through the system. It makes it flushing it a little, little easier. But you don't have to do that, which I didn't do here. So as you can see, I'm filling up the reservoir with distilled water as well as the uh, funnel here so that way we can go ahead and make sure we fill the system up properly with everything so once it's all drained out on this particular vehicle it was a gallon and a half of coolant that actually is in the cooling system so you'll be using just about the same amount of uh, distilled water to go with that So then once we go ahead and actually fill everything, we'll go ahead and actually take a drive about five or 10 minutes. So that way the vehicle is at an operating temperature, make sure everything flows through the system and everything gets uh, washed out correctly. Now, It's important to go ahead and have the heater on as well so that way you while you're flushing the system the cooling system and everything goes into the reservoir I'm sorry not the reservoir the actual heater core system so that way it can go ahead as well get all flushed out and everything. So you wanna make sure that the heater is on and on high when you're doing this. So what we're gonna do essentially right now, we're gonna go ahead and actually burp the system. So we'll go ahead and start the vehicle. And like I said, we're going to go ahead and actually put the heater on and the fan on high. Obviously, make sure the AC is off. And then the other thing that you want to make sure is to have the, the air on uh, central mode, which, as you see, I just turned it on right there. This way everything goes into the heater core and all gets worked out properly. And you see me just kind of pointing out what you needed there. Now the main reason why you want to go ahead and burp the system is to make sure that there is no air in the system. Otherwise, if there is air in the system, you've run a really big risk of overheating and actually damaging or actually breaking your engine. So just go ahead and let it run for about 10, 15 minutes, just burping the system. And then after you go ahead and done burping the system, just tighten everything back up and take that five or 10 minute drive. Now we're back from the test drive. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is open up the petcock again. So that way we can drain out all the distilled water and anything else that might be in the system. You're gonna go ahead and actually do this about three or four times before you're actually done. Now, I say three or four times only because like while you're going ahead and doing this system, you want to make sure that everything coming out of the radiator is just the clear distilled water at this point. Once you're going, once it comes back all clear and nothing else comes out of it, then you know you've actually you just completely flushed the system and made sure that it's correctly done. Now, as you can see, that there is some blue that came out of here. I let it drain out the first time. Just go ahead and make sure everything was good. Nothing was coming out, but obviously there was some more 
of the original coolant in the system. So we'll go ahead and let that drain out all the way and then redo everything. So at this point, I've gone ahead and done it three times, driven the car around after each fill up with the distilled water, drained it again. Now it all came out clear. So now we're gonna go ahead and put the proper coolant into the system, which in this vehicle is the blue coolant. You can go ahead and buy the concentrated stuff, but grabbing the 50-50 will work great for you. You don't have to worry about measuring anything out. Like I said, the system takes about one and a half gallons. So we're making sure we're fill it up to the proper levels and then making sure that uh, the coolant reservoir as well is full to the proper level. Now while you're burping the system you want to make sure you have a funnel or a funnel like the one I have or something along those similar features um you can purchase a coolant flush kit which i will go ahead and link in the, in the description but the main reason why you want to go ahead and do this is this way all the liquid is at its highest point so when air is escaping through the system it would actually go ahead to the funnel there and come out because that is the highest point above the engine Something like this you obviously want to take your time doing because if you rush it, you don't burp the system correctly, like I mentioned earlier, you will essentially destroy your engine and not be able to do really much of anything after that point other than to purchase a new engine or a new vehicle. So taking your time, making sure everything is done correctly will actually save you a lot of time normally uh, this will take about an hour to two hours depending on how many times you have to go ahead and do the flushing of the system and refilling but it's really not hard at all to do And like you see here, I'm filling up the reservoir now to make sure that it's going to be at the proper level. Then once it's at the proper level, we're going to go ahead and move the funnel back over to the radiator. Pour more fluid in to make sure that the fluid is higher than the engine itself. So that way we can make sure all the air gets out of the system. Now just making sure that it was at the max level. Now we'll go ahead and fill it the, the rest of the way so that way we can start burping the system. All right, so you see about halfway up the, the funnel there. That's pretty much all you really want to go ahead and do. You don't want to overfill it because then while it's burping, you'll have coolant splashing onto the engine. And honestly, you don't want to do that. So we'll go ahead and start the vehicle up here. And then, like I said, we'll go ahead and start burping the system 
Make sure we get all the air out of the cooling system. As you can kind of see with the movement of the, the liquid, you can kind of see that there is some air coming out of it already. I'll go ahead and show you here on how it looks when it's burping out of the system. As you can see there. So again, you want to do this for about 15 minutes or so. You can do it longer. It's really not going to hurt anything. Just making sure that all the air is out of the system. So here we are 15 minutes later. I'm going to go ahead and shut the vehicle off. And then get this job all wrapped up. So I'm going to go ahead and put a stopper in there so that way the liquid doesn't go ahead and come out from the bottom once I go ahead and remove the funnel. And then this extra coolant I'll just go ahead and put back into the, into the bottle. It's still good coolant so you can save that for later on if you need to add more. And that's pretty much it, team. So the next thing you want to do is just make sure everything is all nice and tight. Nothing's going to be spilling out. So if this helped at all, please like the video. Consider subscribing if you're not subscribed already. I try to go ahead and do as many of these videos as I can. So that way I can go ahead and help you guys out. So that's it. So on to the next.